You want to start off with your parts, pre-racked, pre-cleaned. They have to be very clean. And then you want to go into the etch tank. And you want to be in the etch tank for about 10 seconds. Let the parts drip over the etch tank to keep the etch solution in the etch tank and then go into a rinse tank. Clean water, preferably DI or distilled. And then into the anodized tank. Make sure the contacts in the saddles are clean. Go ahead and turn on the power supply and you're going to Slowly raise the voltage up while you watch the current over the course of about 30 seconds. The idea being if you go up slowly enough as you evolve gas around the parts, you don't want that gas to get trapped into any recesses or holes. As you develop an anodic coating, the anodic coating will insulate the part and that'll make the amperage tend to drop off. So if the amperage drops very low, it's time to start ramping your voltage up a little more to increase the potential so that you increase the thickness of the coating. As you can see, the, the amperage is all over the place, but the trend is downward. This is the thermostat that controls the temperature of the etch. You want to be around 120 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Notice that we're down to about 2.8 amps at, a, at about 42.6 volts. I want to kick up the voltage just a little bit to bring the amperage up slightly just so we can have just a little thicker coating. Now depending upon your rack design you may need to turn the parts about halfway into the process to allow them to make contact in a different area. Once you're finished, you want to turn the voltage on the power supply down, pull the parts out, and rinse them off. You need to rinse thoroughly again with very clean water. You'll let the parts dry, and then you'll bead blast. We, on our larger systems, we usually follow that rinse with a heated final rinse using DI water in order to keep the parts from staining. Also, the heated rinse will have a tendency to make the water flash off more quickly. We're running this one, uh, looks like we're about 120 right now, but normally it'd be about 130 degrees. Again, it would uh, make them dry more quickly, and then we can get them into the bead blaster.